Hey guys, this week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter the offer code COLT at checkout for 10% off. Squarespace. Build it beautiful. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. All right, how you guys doing? Come on in. Let's do this. Let's get this done. Solid week this week. You're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I am a host. I'm a podcast awards host. I'm a Fago, a wet Fago t-shirt contest host. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler. And I am sitting here live in the studio, apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before we go any further, this is a fan support and listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. Give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. ColtCabana.com, SoundCloud, iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, please. Tell a friend via social media, via mouth, via text, via Reddit, via message board. Or if you got a couple of bucks in your pocket, head on over to ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com. T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads, all that premium stuff, including where that Kevin Steen podcast came from. And brand new VHS style retro T-shirts are up at ColtMerch.com and DigitalColt.com. Okay, in a perfect world, we would just lead into this story, this truth martini story that we're about to present to you. And I wouldn't talk about some other stuff, but a lot of stuff has happened this week, and I will get into it. But I want to talk about this story. This is based off of the fact of, I think, Cliff's Nigeria story. And then when Truth was texting me this story, I was like, ding, 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 Truth. I know you're a storyteller, I know you got a story, and I know it will last as long as a podcast will last. Why don't you stop telling me this so I could just take it all in with myself and then also with the listeners of the Art of Wrestling community, if you will, because I think they would appreciate it as much as I'm about to appreciate it. And I did. And I did. You'll hear me within like the first 10 minutes. Truth is trying to look up dates and like trying to get all the dates right. And you'll hear me. I go, Truth, stop looking at that and look at me and tell me this story. And I know the management at ROH was like, when you tell stuff and you do podcasts, make sure you get the dates right so people can go back and look it up. Well, it's not hard to Google anything. And gratefully, he stopped looking at the computer. And then he looked me in the eyes and he told me this crazy, rambunctious, just wild story. I don't know who we are as wrestlers or people, but we are different breed. We are of a different breed. We are different animals. There's something in our mind that says, hey, I can work this guy to make him clap or make him cheer or make him boo. I have that power. I'm a pro wrestler. That's what I do. So we also think we have that ability just to do that to anybody Anybody, even if it's not true, we still think we can do that. Myself included in some, I'm I'm self-aware that I know about it. Some aren't self-aware, but that's something I probably, yeah, yeah, I definitely do. And Truth Martini did in this episode explaining it all. Okay, I'll keep this a little short because I want to get to the story because I think it's a lot of fun. As you're listening to this, I will be in Scotland, Edinburgh, Scotland. Next week will be the start of the live Edinburgh podcast series, the summer series. That seems to be a tradition now. If you live in Scotland, if you live in the UK, please come to those comedy shows. Please come to the live podcasts and please come to the ICW shows and just come check out other shows. My friend Graham Clark from Stop Podcasting Yourself. Look him up. He's doing a show. Kyle Kinane. He's doing a show. Ari Shafir's got a show. Brendan Burns has his own show. Baby Wants Candy, which is a Chicago thing, and Grado and I actually did a cameo in it last year. They got a show. Jamie Kilstein, who Matt Seidel is a huge fan of, he's got a show. Check out some fun comedians over there while you're at it. But, you know, I'm number one, right? You you know that. All right. Uh, Also, this week, I hosted the Podcast Awards. Yeah, I was also in Lexington, Kentucky, and I wrestled the Loverboy. 
and I did a promo on Cut My Promo with Big Frank, who I hope you've seen on my YouTube channel. But I did the podcast awards. I hosted the podcast awards, and I kind of like, you know, I say I don't do stand-up comedy, but I say I'll do the stand-up when I open for Mick because I know my crowd. Weirdly enough, I did like a five-minute monologue, and I also know my crowd of podcasters. I got some podcast jokes in my pocket. I can make a Squarespace joke. I can make a Bombas joke. This is a thing I know. Doing podcasts in my underwear? Right up my alley. I felt at home. It felt great. And also, I got that feeling that you guys probably feel when you're around my world. Which was a great feeling. Not that I didn't know about that feeling, but I'm relating to you guys on a whole nother level. Roman Mars of 99% Invisible, I presented him with an award, we had a conversation, probably one of my very favorite podcasts, and we were just, uh, you know, shooting the shit. But inside, I was like a little podcast fanboy. You want to know who else told me I did a great job? I'm just trying to brag, by the way. Like, you're that text message that afterwards this happens to, except it's in a podcast form. Adam Curry, yeah. Headbangers ball, Adam Curry. He's like, you're doing a great job. And I'm like, oh, thanks, Adam Curry. And he's like, no, these things usually fucking suck. You're doing like a really good job. And then I was like, whoa, thanks. And then I was like, wait, you're the presenter. That's your job. I know you from Headbangers ball and presenting stuff. I just went up there and did a thing, but like, I might be good at it. Kind of like this thing. I just started talking into a microphone. Maybe I'm good at it. I think I'm good at it. Adam Curry says I'm good at it. What a good feeling. Man, I'd usually lie and say I wouldn't want tweets about people telling me how great I am, but I think I really like it. I think outside of wrestling, it's almost like, yeah, I get it. I know. I'm all right at wrestling, but podcast award hosting. The future is now. Those guys at the podcast movement did such a great job. I was kicking myself for not staying the whole time. I know for sure, 100%, I will be at all three days next year when it's in Chicago. Fuck, that's great. Can't wait for all the podcasters to come to Chicago and hang out with me and all my Chicago friends. What other stuff? Oh, entertainment stuff was on Marin, the television show, IFC. Kind of my debutish stuff in television. I was a part of the Chris Gethard Comedy Central pilot show. Didn't make it to Comedy Central. I was in an Old Navy commercial once. You could barely see me. But this was like, hey, here's you, Colt Cabana, on cable television and us not treating you like a scrub, like my other cable television debut against Brian Kendrick. This was real. This was real. And people liked it and dug it. And I can't wait to hopefully do more stuff of that. More entertainment. Hey, you're a podcast fan. You listen to podcasts right now. You enjoy podcasts. I was on The Mystery Show. Starly Kine, podcast superstar. Maybe some of you don't know. Maybe some of you do know. She has a show called The Mystery Show. It's with Gimlet Media. They do Start Up and Reply All, two of my other favorite podcasts. And then, all of a sudden, they're like, we need a wrestler. Who's a wrestler in the world of podcasting who'd be fun, who'd like to come on our show? Colt Cabana! Yay! So I got to be on that. Please download that. Find that on iTunes. And then lastly, I don't want to bring this thing down, but we'll try to do it while bringing it up. It hit me hard, man. It fucking hit me hard. And it hasn't, like, lingered... But like the second I read it in a group chat with my friends and it was Piper R.I.P. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And today, fucking today, I read that my friend Jim Jesus, uh, Jim Lynham, had passed away. 42 years old. Piper, 61 years old. And I'm just like, first first of all, my thoughts and and, and not no prayers, but just my thoughts uh, and grievances go out to, to both of those guys' families. But uh, man... I'm like, is this, am I of an age where this happens now? I mean, I know I'm 35, but it's like, we're, we're dropping. That's what happens in life. It's going to happen to everyone. And uh, that hit me hard, especially because we had just done the podcast. The Sklars were super excited. He was just on their podcast and uh, he was going to be a part of the mid-roll team who invited me, you know, years ago into their world and uh, just, just uh, sad But uh, please go back and listen to the two-parter I did with him because it was amazing. He was an amazing person, and I loved being around the positive aura of a guy who had done everything and was just the biggest, greatest superstar and was not a a schmuck to me or my friends, was totally positive, was totally nice. I'm I'm just grateful that, that he was able to do the show. Like, 
He was a guy I wanted to do the show for years, for years. And like, I don't just attack people and be like, be on my show. It's just, it has to come organically and naturally. And finally got to the point where we just started talking about podcasts one day and he knew I had done one. So I slipped it in there like, oh, I'd love to have you on. He was like, yeah. And, and that's just kind of how it happens. So, so grateful that he was on the show. He will be missed. And hopefully Truth Martini on this episode will make him proud with the shenanigans of this story that he's about to tell you. Song of the Week this week is brought to you by Squarespace. Not sure if you've even seen it, but ColtCabana.com is totally rebuilt and it's beautiful. Having a good website is so important. It's the millennial's business card. Impress me with your website, I say, as a businessman. Do it with Squarespace. Not only can anyone do it, but anyone can make it look professionally designed. Anyone. There's no coding or HTML or any of that required. Start your free trial site today. No credit card required over at squarespace.com. I'll get you 10% off when you decide to sign up with the offer code Colt. DIY. I stress it enough. I know you, you listening to this. I know what you're trying to do. You got a podcast. You got a blog. You got a thing. You need a home site for it. That's just how it works. 24-7 online support. Free domain name and it's only eight bucks a month millions of people use squarespace so sign up at squarespace.com get 10 percent off with the code cult support the show support your dreams and congratulations on not spending hours and hours trying to build a website squarespace build it beautiful song of the week is something near and dear to my heart one of my favorite songs ever was that wrestling album for everybody Roddy Piper, rest in peace, of course. And there was always this rumor that he was really saying fuck everybody, but he somehow snuck it on by calling it for everybody. This was a rumor as a kid before the internet or anything. And now we have the internet, and now we know that he basically covered the song Fuck Everybody by Mike Angelo and the Idols. And I want to play that song. I know it's not specifically a wrestling song, but it's a wrestling song to me. I think Roddy Piper, I think the wrestling album, I think how cool this guy was, how punk rock this guy was to get this song snuck on to that album at that time. Roddy Piper, we love you, man. Enjoy. We'll be back with the craziest story ever by Truth Martin.
Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Oh, hell yeah. I, I'm not even going to bother trying to do it like Stone Cold, but you get the idea. Get in the ring and race some hell with WWE 2K16. The undisputed champion of wrestling video games returns with the biggest roster in WWE history and the Texas Rattlesnake Stone Cold Steve Austin as its cover superstar. Play as your favorite superstar from the past, present, and future and experience the most authentic, comprehensive, in-your-face WWE video game of all time. Oh, also, hey, WWE Universe, meet the Terminator. Yeah. Grab two exclusive playable versions of Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator when you pre-order WWE 2K16. WWE 2K16 has the largest roster in WWE video game history, and also, yours truly helped make it. That's a true fact. WWE 2K16 releases on October 27th and will be available on PS4, PS3, Xbox One, and Xbox 360 platforms. Pre-order the thing. All right, thanks. Here, let me paint the picture for you. Truth Martini sitting on a couch, smoking a cigarette. I mean, this is, if I had a camera right now, this would be art. <laughs> <laughs> and I roll my own cigarettes, by the way. Rolls his own cigarettes yes. like a true bohemian uh, hipster. What are you, Armenian? Albanian. Albanian, actually. sorry. Albanian, it's fine. It, it all picks. So uh, years ago, I had. Cliff Compton on the show to talk about his uh, trip to Nigeria because it was fascinating. You know, and actually I had Necro Butcher on just to talk about the wrestler. Nice. By the way, uh, Cliff Compton, I find him fascinating. Well, he's a fascinating about. person. Yeah, yeah, he's incredible. And he's I think incredible. I think the, the point is, is also, I think a lot of people, and now truth, I've been doing this for five years, still to, still. People. Every week for five years. Every week now, for five years. You have to be the hardest working man in professional wrestling. You have to be. I'm just the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and still to this day, people are like, I loved the Truth Martini episode. Loved yeah. it. I don't know if you get any compliments or people saying stuff, but people loved it. Uh, I've I've gotten a few, but again, uh, th th that was me uh, not exactly knowing how these podcasts work. And like I said that day of, I was like, "How does this work?" You go, "We just talk," and I was like, "That's it, we just talk." And there it was. Uh, people got to know the real me. Yeah. Oh, do you regret that a little bit? Not at all. Oh, okay. Not at all, because it just goes back to what my grandfather told me: "Live your life as an open book. If people like you for who you are, that's fine. If they don't, f them. Beep." Beep them, beep, and people love you. So, you were on the, you were, we were to listen, and so that conversation is a conversation of amongst many we've had over the years. Yes, uh, sitting around bullshitting, and then just you know a couple weeks ago we were also having this other conversation, and you start going into this elaborate plan or this elaborate happening that happened to you, and I was just like, can we save this for the show? And you were like, Ab absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Uh, the I'm pretty sure the story you're talking about is me fighting the law, because that's what I did, man. And then who, and who, well, I mean, that's a spoiler, I would say, because the song goes, <laughs> I fought the law, and the law won. Exactly. <laughs> but, but we won't give a spoiler, but we will give a setup. You fought the law. I literally fought the law, because what happened was- And, uh, and dare I say, this involves wrestling also. Of course. So, like, not, you know, and I liked how the Cliff one was with Nigeria, but wrestling. You know, Necro Butcher, the wrestler, the movie, wrestling. Yep. You fighting the law. But hey, guys, hey, wrestling fans, this is a wrestling story also. <laughs> <laughs> this definitely is a professional wrestling story. So what happens is, of course, you know, I work for Ring of Honor, so we had a weekend. Uh, we were getting ready for Best in the World, live on pay-per-view, one of the biggest, as, the, as they all like to say, the biggest show yet, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, me and Jay Lethal, we've been, you know, Jay Lethal's been in the House of Truth for a year now. So, like, a lot of build-up to that, a lot of build-up to that story. And then... Um, I had ended up getting a DUI. I, I blew a point zero eight, and if anybody's familiar with that, that's two beers. When was this? That this was, I'll say, in April of last year. Okay, and when was Best in the World? Oh, just this. Yeah, and, and Best in the World is June, June nineteenth of this year. Of this year. Okay, got it. Of this year. 
So over a year ago, you got a <laughs> .08 on a, D, on a Dewey. Yep, a .08 on a DUI. And I just always remembered, why do I always keep getting this horrible treatment by cops? What is it? Is it the way I look? What's the case? So after I got arrested, I was thinking like, oh, man, like this is not going to be good because I can now, I'm not allowed in Canada. That's just the way they do it. And I already had my 10-year stint of not being allowed in Canada already. I already went through a 10-year stint, which I got across sometimes. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm still working on that. I have a 10-year, they, they told me, because I got kicked out in uh, 06 because this guy in Winnipeg. Uh, fuck me over, and so I have to wait till 2016 till I'm allowed, till nice. I'm not brought in every time. But I am allowed to pass. Nice. So, so we ended up uh, for Ring of Honor. We ended up doing. Uh, it was uh, the pay per view. I think was on a Friday or a Saturday. Best in the world, the 19th. If you guys want to know for sure, it was look, a Saturday. Saturday. That's right. So Saturday was the pay per view in. Saturday was the pay-per-view. For those of you who know, he's referencing... I think this is taking you away from everything right now, Truth. You're it, referencing the website. <laughs> it is, because I'm, I'm trying to figure out the date. So, actually, I'm just going to not even look at that. I don't think date. you should look at that. Okay. Look at me and tell me the story. There we go. So, basically, what happened is uh, we had did uh, Global Wars, where they brought in a lot of talent from overseas and all that kind of stuff, and we did it in Philly, two days in Philly. So, it was Philly and Philly. I think that was a, a Wednesday and a Thursday. And that was in Philly. Then after that, we drove to Rochester, New York to do pre-tapes. So we drive to Rochester, New York. We ended up doing our pre-tapes. And then we kind of got done a little bit early, meaning around 6 p.m.-ish. So then we wanted to cross the board and go over into Toronto because that's where our hotels are. So we had uh, two big buses with us. So um, there we all are. Pretty much the entire Ring of Honor roster. We are now in customs because we were told to pull over, and everybody's there. So um, this is I, Friday night. The, yeah, the, the, this is Friday. Late night. Friday night, knowing the show is Saturday. Knowing the show is Saturday. Okay. Uh, sa Saturday being uh, the pay per view, of course, and then uh, the next day. The next day, shooting four weeks of television, shooting four weeks of television. And already, just knowing what I just said, uh, I actually made it backwards because it wasn't best in the world. It was a different show because we had one month to set up, best to set up gotcha. for best in the world. Right. That's what the deal was. That's exactly what the deal was. So here we are at immigration, and they're checking everybody out, and then... When we go to when we cross the border, we're gonna go to Toronto to do the show, and then the next day shoot four weeks of television, which then sets up for Best in the World, which is Jay Lethal with his ever so great manager Truth mm -hmm. Martini the versus most important. Jay Briscoe. Right? I mean, hell, if life don't check you, I will. That's what I like to say. So you gotta close this computer. It's taking your. Way got you to. down the computer down thank you so then uh basically what happened after that uh la, it's a long story but i'll tell you the important parts so it's my time to go up to the teller and right away the lady i had i had a um, uh what is that that you call uh passport not of course the passport a letter um Temporary residency. Okay, in Canada. In Canada. I have temporary residency, which is the, the expiration date still has not expired. So they get me up there. So you also live in Scott Demore's basement sometimes, <laughs> basically, <Yeah. right? laughs> So temporary residency, which it's funny. Every time I cross, they always thought it was bizarre why I had temporary residency. They ask me, why do you have it? And I always say, I don't know. You guys gave it to me, <laughs> right? So then... Uh, Right there, she grabs it and she rips up my temporary residency right then and there. This lady, attitude right away? This lady. They always do, don't of they? Of course. They of always course. Do. Attitude right away. She ripped it up. She ripped it up and says, you cannot cross into Canada because of that DUI you had. The point zero eight. <clears throat> when that happened, I looked at Hunter, who's my boss. 
I looked at him right in the face when he realized that I wasn't going to be in Toronto to do four weeks of television to set up for the main event of Best in the World, which was going to be a special night. Now the duo of Truth Martini and Jay Lethal will now only be Jay Lethal, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not, it's not what it is. It's the house of truth. The look on the look on Hunter's face just his face just dropped because he saw I saw that everything he's built and worked hard for was all going to come crashing down the pivotal the most important last 4 weeks of the television show before the pay-per-view I was not going to be there and his face Yes, I saw it. He was devastated. I saw it in his face. He was devastated. He stands up right now, by the way. I saw it in his face, and he was devastated. I walked right up to him, and I said, I will be in Toronto tomorrow. And he kind of chuckled, not in a funny way, but kind of thinking like, yeah, right. I just saw the border saying, you are not allowed in Canada. That's fine. But I made a conscious choice, and I said, I'm going to be to Toronto. I'm going to be in Toronto. So what happens is I watch the, 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 the buses leave. Everybody gets on, and there I am at, at the immigration, and the buses take off, and I'm left alone. Alone? Alone. No, no ride to get back anywhere? No ride, no nothing ROH to get back. ROH is fine with that, too. They're like, what? <laughs> it seemed like, but Jay Lethal, which is a close personal friend of mine as he was hopping on the bus he said hey i made a phone call to sinclair broadcasting somebody's picking you up from here and taking you back to the hotel in rochester okay, New York." good man good man that jay lethal jay lethal great man great man honestly, there i say great what a friend man, what a honestly. friend no, no, nobody else did anything about it Couldn't have jay, jay lethal was the only one Beautiful. right so then uh, here comes a man from Sinclair Broadcasting coming and picking me up in a car. I've never met this man in his life. He was wearing a suit and a tie. And as we're driving back, it was probably about a 45-minute drive back. I want to say he was wearing a suit and a tie, and you looked like you. And I, and, <laughs> and I looked like me, uh, definitely. And this, this man was in a chatty mood, but I definitely was not in a chatty mood because I'm thinking... Everything I've worked hard for, like, this is bad. This is not good. So I get back to my room. So at this point right now, it is around 8, 8 p.m. So I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to Toronto. That I do know. So I go through my phone book, and uh, I go through a few people, and I call up one of my girls, right? I call up one of my girls, and I tell her the situation, and she drives from Detroit to Rochester, New York, and she doesn't have a passport. So it took her a good eight, nine hours. She has to go around she the had lake. To, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, she had to go around. She had to go around. She picks me up, and then because of the look I saw in her face, it didn't seem she was too happy, and I was like, yo, get in the passenger seat. I'll drive home. So I drove home to Detroit. We took our time because I'm still planning. Yeah, we had to take the long run. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to Toronto. So I'm thinking I, of the time. You're getting home about 4 a.m.-ish, maybe? 4 a.m.-ish, yeah. Okay. Uh, but I was exhausted. Um, the whole way I was driving, I was fighting sleep off where my eyes were just closing, but I keep uh, trying to keep them open. But I did it. We get home actually around 5 a.m., what I then do is I tell her, thank you very much, and she leaves. She goes home. So I'm like, okay, I live in Detroit. The border is five minutes from my house. What I do is I go, the show starts That's at the Windsor seven, border, right? The Windsor border, okay. correct. The show starts at 7.30. The show starts at 7.30 p.m., and I go, they told me I'm not allowed to cross, but... Everything that I'm going to have to do, because it's like I already played it through my head, Colt. It's very weird. Like, I made, I made a choice. After I made this choice, it's like there is no going back on it. I told my boss, I will be there. And, like, today, nowadays, a, a man's word barely means anything nowadays. But, again... Uh, from that Albanian culture yeah, right, and everything I, we know about you. A, a man's word means so much more than people understand in my culture. It's, it's, 
if you say something, it's it's might as well it, it's done. It's it's might as it's just as good as being done. So I go ahead and I put on my Truth Martini suit. Okay. And I'm at home. I put on my Truth Martini suit, and I hop in the car and I start driving to Windsor, where I was just told at 6 p.m. the day before you are not allowed. So I drive up and I'm by myself and I'm in my suit because I knew they were going to give me some trouble. So and the show started at 7:30. Okay, not the suit, like because I'm look at me, I'm a businessman, man. But knowing if I was ever to cross. I would I would get there like a minute before my match, right? Is that what it is? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna be in gear. I'm gonna be in gear, and I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna be ready to do what I do. So as soon as I get there, of course, they ask for my passport. I, I give it to him, and then he says, "Were you just in Buffalo, New York, yesterday?" And they told you, you cannot cross. I go, yes. And he goes, what are you doing now? I go, I'm going to Toronto. He goes, you were told you can't go to Toronto. I go, yes, that's what I was told. But I have to go to Toronto to perform. Really quick, he, he stickers me, you know, puts a sticker on the windshield. There I go into immigration. So there I am, I'm waiting. So about 20 minutes later, I get called up by one of the immigration officers and he says, uh, what's the situation? And I told him the situation, who I work for, what I do. And then uh, and then he goes, I'm sorry, but you have to turn back around because you can't go you can't go to you can't go to Toronto. And then I told him I go, I don't think you understand. I have to go to Toronto because it's something I have to do because it's part of what I do with my life. And then he says, sir, you are making my job hard. That's all I needed to hear. As soon as, soon as he said, you are making my job hard, something inside my head snapped. I said, your job, your job, you are making my life hard. 18 years, every single thing that I've done to build up to get to this point. Trained at Al Snow's Body Slammer School. Getting out there trying to get my name out there. Getting little looks from the WWE, from TNA, all that kind of stuff. Break my neck in 2005, May 13th. Keep trying to push forward, push forward, push forward. Now I'm in the ring of honor. I'm in a great position. And this man is telling me I'm making his job hard. His job. <clears throat> something is something happens when you get older, Colt. It's kind of like if you still view people as giants, what that means is an authority figure. If you think they're a little bit higher than you, that is not the right way to view them because they are human beings, just like me and you. No different. So they're you're saying as we're older. Yeah. You're saying as older, you have taken away the idea of people are larger than life and we're all just dudes. Yes, okay. yes. For me to be intimidated by somebody, I have lost the ability to be intimidated by somebody. I don't know where it went. It's still a little new to me. I still search for it. It's like, come on, something has to intimidate me. <laughs> right. But I just can't seem to find it. So then now I know when I see old men walking down the street with their arms behind their back, that shows total confidence because they have the right to do it. Because they've been on this earth for so long. It's just kind of like in wrestling. You know, the longer you are, the more stuff you're excused you can do. A new guy cannot walk in and joke around in the locker room, but a guy that's been doing it for a long time, the rules are the rules are different for them. So after he said I'm making his job hard, that's when I went off on him. And I started speaking very loud. Now, if you guys can envision the uh, immigration, there's probably five people behind the desk working. And then there I am waiting in line and other people waiting in line. And there's some people on the desk. And he is saying, you're not being able to cross. Now it almost started turn, turning childless because I'm uh, uh, like, like, like children, because I'm saying I'm crossing. He's saying, no, you're not. I'm like, yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. And then 
another another one of the uh, members came over to me and said, what's the problem here? And I go, look, I work for Ring of Honor Wrestling. And I told him the situation. Yes, I was in Rochester, New York yesterday. And I told I wasn't able to cross. But I live here in Detroit. And I just drove nine hours without any sleep. And I'm here to do what I'm supposed to do. And because of a .08, which that's two beers, people, for those of you that do not know, a .08, you are not going to let me cross and let me flush everything down the toilet, everything I've worked hard for, everything I've worked hard for. And then I remember when I got my .08, just to backtrack a little bit, because I, uh, I had to get a lawyer for the situation. And in Michigan, they don't play around with DUIs. They wanted me to do two months in jail for that. So I had to get a lawyer, a Jewish lawyer. Shalom. He was great. Of course he was. He was. <laughs> he, was he was incredible. He was incredible. Costed me a lot of money. Well, that's... But, but that's fine. You, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. And I remember talking to my lawyer, and then I'm like, why are they throwing the book so hard at me? The book of truth, if you will. The book of truth. Why not? Why are they throwing the book so hard at me? He goes, well, because of your previous records. I'm like, what previous records? Like, yes, I had another DUI in 2005. But that was like 10 years ago, and I blew, I think, a 1.2, which was real, which is really nothing. And that story in itself is a long story. I actually went to save somebody so they wouldn't drink and drive. And when I got there, there were wrestling fans. Oh, it's truth. Have a shot. It's my birthday. Sure. Have another one. So after two and a half shots of Jack Daniels, next thing you know, I get you know, my students in the car at the time. I'm sure they won't mind me saying their names. It was Zach Gowan and Brian Gorey. Because with my students, I tell them if you need me for anything, not just wrestling related, if you get in a bind, call me. And then, so, and then the, the lawyer says, well, all your past priors, like you escaped prison. Mm -hmm. Of course you, you have three counts of theft against you. The sheet was like 23 offenses long. And I looked and I was like, this is not me. He was like, what? So now we had a case on top of another case. I had identity theft that I had no idea about. And now it made sense. Every time I got pulled over by the cops, why they treated me like shit. Because when they come up to me, they're like, of course, you know, uh, in their car. We're dealing with it, a real it, piece of shit here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're dealing with a real piece of shit. That's their mentality. After everything shows up on their computer screen. Okay, this guy's a thief. He's escaped jail before. You know, 23 offenses, however many uh, long it is. And at .08, if I didn't have... If I didn't have those offenses, of course he would have said, all right, sir, be careful, go home. Everybody and their mother knows that .08, legally, you are drunk, but realistically, you are not. Two beers, you are not drunk. So then I, I had to fight that off. And then I told the guys uh, at, the, at the Canadian Immigration the same thing. And then he was like, and then he goes, there's nothing I can do. I'm like, are you saying there's nothing you can do? Because when people talk to me, every word they say, I take it literally. He's saying there's nothing I can do. And I was like, nothing. I go, I just got done telling you that for 18 years, everything I've worked hard for might get flushed down the toilet and I might get fired and I might get fired because of your saying, there's nothing you can do. I go, have you ever broken any law in your life, sir? He kind of like nodded up and down. Yeah, I go, of course you have. We all have. We all have. I go, but listen, I'm a human being. And please treat me one. Because the way you're talking to me, you are not talking to me like a human being. You are treating me like a criminal. He goes, if you were not, he goes, he goes you being in here alone makes us think you are, in, are a criminal. So he called me a criminal. Mm -hmm. Me, that I've had no kinds of trouble with the law except that DUI and 10 years prior, another DUI. And when I was 17 years old, a CCW charge. Fuck it, I'm a product of my environment. I grew up in Detroit. I had a gun on me when I was 17. Around here, who hasn't, right? And uh, so I had that when I was 17. 
So when he said that I am a criminal, now we're standing up, She's right? Standing. Don't You're up, this like, 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 like we're sta- we're like we're all standing up. The people are back there. There's some few people. Now, remember, I'm wearing my red suit, my truth martini suit, my hair is down, all that kind of stuff. I jumped up on top of the bench. <laughs> I am now on top of the bench. And I go, everybody, what is it? Is it my long hair? Is that why you're judging me? Is it because I had two beers? As if everybody here has never had two beers. And then there was actually this hot girl that was working there. She looked about 28 years old. She literally busted out the word liar. She called me a liar. And you want to know what I said? I said, fuck you for calling me a liar. Don't you call me a liar. You do not know how my story goes. You do not know me, and you called me a liar. And then the officers are saying, God, please keep it down. I go, no, no. Actually, I have something to say. Ten years ago, I was here at immigration, and I got asked by one of the cops, have you ever been convicted of a felony? And I said, yes. He goes, what was it? I go, when I was 17, it was a CCW charge. That means carrying concealed weapon. Ten years ago, I was asked that. This man grabbed me by the back of my hair, threw me down to the ground, pulled his gun out, pulled his gun out and put it right to the back of my head and said, don't move, don't move. Who treats a human being like that? Who? Who? And you, that man that did that, if you are here today, if you still work here or if you're in this room right now, fuck you for doing that to me because you do not treat a human being that way. And at this point, I'm thinking, why isn't anybody taking me down from this bench. (laughs) The same way that he did. Exactly. Like, what's happening here? I have the attention of all of all the uh what are they called immigration the, workers the, the immigration workers and everybody's standing and everybody's staying there. You're right holding now. court. You're holding court. Yeah, 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 definitely. And I'm just but that's the thing though. That's the thing, Colt. I was speaking truly from my heart. Just everything I felt. And then and then they go, Sir, sir, please come down for the bench. And I was like, I'm not done talking. I am not done talking. I go, where has humanity, where has humanity went? And I'm being dead serious. I mean, it's, it's innocent and proving guilty, not guilty until proven innocent. But that's just the way it is nowadays. And then I keep looking at my watch at the time, and I go, guys, the show starts at 7.30. I have to go. So... The guy asked me to come down off the bench, and I did. And another guy was coming over with handcuffs. Yeah, yeah. And then he started grabbing my arm. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, sir, we're going to have to arrest you. I go, how can I be in Toronto if you're going to arrest me? (laughs) At the 7.30 show. At a 7.30 show. He goes, how? I, I go, how? He goes, sir, I go, I go, I'm not being arrested. He goes, sir, yes, you are. I go, no, I'm not being arrested. I have to go perform. I have to go live my life. I have to go continue on my journey that I've been continuing for 18 years. And there's no way in the world that anybody in this building is going to stop me from doing that. So then they go, can we just have a few minutes of your time and go into this other room? Like, sure, we could do that. So we're sitting down now. We're sitting down in like a small booth, and it sounded like, I don't know if it was soundproof, but it was definitely confined in glass. And I'm sitting down, and I'm talking to this gentleman. So he goes, you are giving us a really hard time. I go, as you, me. He goes, you're not allowed. You're not allowed by law to go across. If I let you get across and something happens, my job is on the line. And I go, I know what jobs on the line feel like because if I don't go to to Toronto, my job is on the line. And then this took about a good, again, when I arrived there, when I arrived into immigration, it was around 9 a.m., 9 a.m. 
So, and I'm telling these guys, 7.30, and it's a four-hour trip. And then he goes, I'm sorry. You know, like he's reading my paperwork, you know, and he's saying, you know, he's calling me by my, by my, by my first name. He goes, I'm sorry, you can't cross. And I'm saying, I'm sorry that if this is going to give you more of a difficult time, but I am crossing. And then he goes, what gives you the right to say that? I'm telling you no, but you're saying yes. I go, I keep saying yes because it is yes. <laughs> like there's nothing, and I don't know how weird this sounds, but the power of words. If, there, if anybody's going to gain anything from this, it is the power of words. And hell, you can, you, you can throw it right into wrestling. You can use it that way. Uh, but the power of words, the power of the mouth can make so many things happen that it's mind-blowing to me. And then he looked at me dead in the eyes and he said, you are not going to Toronto. And then I stood up. He goes, sir, please sit down. I go, no, 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 no. I go, we're going to get out of this room. You are going to give me a temporary permit. <laughs> and uh, how much would that cost? He goes, 200 bucks. I'm like, whatever it's going to cost, and we're going to go. And then he goes, no, sorry, sir. And then, and then, I, and then at this point, now you got to remember, at this point it is, I'll say about... 145. Okay. It's like 145. In your head, you got a 330 PM. out, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Four the, hours, 730 start. You want to be out of there at 330. Yeah. Three, on, on your way to the Toronto. <laughs> on, on, on my way. On my way, exactly. And then, so we keep going back and forth. Uh, at this point, uh, the conversation is just getting weirder and more bizarre he's telling me about his life story i'm giving him advice about his wife for some weird reason like we, we grew some kind of bond for some reason just because we've been arguing so much back and forth you guys knew each other for a long time at this point yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like at a bar you, you right exactly. spent six hours in the bar together exactly exactly and, and you've established that he is not any higher than you no you are on the exact same level it, it, as people as people as people as human beings yeah. exactly Exactly. Like, just because you have a badge on, don't talk down to mm -hmm. me, man. And especially because when I found out why I've been getting treated this way by, by these officials, by these authority figures my whole life, because on paper, I was a piece of shit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and then, but that wasn't the truth. So even by them knowing that, he's still saying I can't cross. And then I finally said this to myself. I go, you know what? Fuck it. Maybe it's karma. Maybe everything that I've done bad in my life. You're maybe it's come up? back. Maybe it's come back to bite me in the ass. Whatever happens. Maybe if I don't go to Canada, I'm gonna get fired. Maybe I'm not gonna get fired. Whatever happens. I guess I deserve whatever is about to happen to me. Oh, you're ready to give in. I was ready to give I in. See it, okay. I was ready to give in. Sorta. So, A little bit of before you were one hundred percent. Now you're you're 96% ready to go to Canada. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to say no to that. I, I chose these words because I wanted a reaction from him to see where he's at after I say, because all he heard is I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to Toronto. So now I switched my tune just to see how he would react to it. And then when I said it's karma, if I don't go, if I lose my job, so be it. That man, he looked at me and he said, you know what? I don't believe in karma. I believe in God. Maybe God doesn't want you to go to Toronto. Think about those words. He said, maybe God does not want you to go to Toronto. As soon as he said those words, I felt my, bud, my blood boiling. And I just wanted to go across that table, not sure what I wanted to do to him, but I had to grab him some way possible. Like something had to, I, had, I needed to touch him. Okay. I needed to touch him because of what I was gonna say to him. He needed to feel that this was real. I leaned over the table and slowly, and you're about to get the okay. impersonation here. I leaned over the table and I got my finger out, and my finger is shaking the closer I'm getting to his chest. Because I know if I, hit, if I touch him hard, he'll probably throw me down and arrest me. So I finally touched him in the chest, and I looked, and I said, look. I go, 
you don't want me to go to Toronto. Not God. Don't you ever play the role of God again. And then his, his eyes went down, and he kind of looked a little bit to the left, and he goes, come on, let's go. I go, hurry up. We're against the clock. <laughs> I go, hurry up. We're against the clock. I go, time's, time's clicking. Hurry up, guys. We Hold on, hold, yeah, on, hold yeah, on, hold on. So yeah. you weren't like, in your mind, were you like, holy shit, this worked? Or were nope. you like, no, no, no. It was like, yep, exactly how, yes, this is it. Again, when I told when I told Hunter, I'll see you in Toronto, I meant it. I meant it. I meant it. So nothing was going to stop me, nothing. And then when he used the God line, maybe God doesn't want you to go. A man saying that, and that's when I said, no, 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 no. You don't want me to go. Not God. Do not play the role of God ever again. <laughs> he mentioned God first, so I was under assumption. You know, he was a religious man, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you played it against him. You know, and again, I backed him right into a corner. Again, the power of words. The power of words, man. And then next thing you know, they're taking me. They're taking a picture of me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm uh, directing traffic. Who's the one that takes the picture? Hurry up. Come on over here. Come on. Let's go. Let's take this. Guys, we're against the clock. So they take the picture of me. I had to pay the $200. I look at the time. I put on my GPS. It says I will arrive. And the building, uh, the show starts at 730. And I was on segment number two. And I was on segment number six. And uh, which we had to do the good old autograph signing. If anybody's seen the autograph signing with Jay Lethal versus Jay Briscoe, that was the, the contract big... signing. There we go. No, I apologize. The autographs yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the contract signing, the good old contract signing. And just to say, man, Jay Briscoe and Jay Lethal, those are two of the most professional guys I've ever worked with. They're incredible. So, and it said I would get there at around 745. And I was like, okay. And then the guy, as I was leaving, he goes, don't speed. Mm. I go, okay. So I just start speeding. I'm speeding through Canada. I'm getting there. Next thing you know, on the GPS, I see the time starting to shave down. down. <laughs> it's shaving down. It's shaving down. Me, I have a, I have a weird phone plan where like you can't call or text when I get into Canada. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty crappy. That's pretty crappy. So as far as the Ring of Honor that's called, roster. That's called the Jewish phone plan where you put it on Wi-Fi. Right? <laughs> hope, you hope there's Wi-Fi, right? I, it's, I have the same plan, Truth. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, so as far as the roster and Hunter, I'm not showing up. Mm. I'm not going to be there. So I'm driving. I'm driving, and I pull up right to the venue, and it was 729. <laughs> and I see Jay Lethal look out, look out of the back door of the venue, and he closed the door right back again as he saw my car. And then Wait, hold on. Yes. I mean, he had seen you, or like he, he was one last oh, look for truth, and he didn't see you? No, I, I think he just happened to look outside, or I don't know, but he's seen me. Oh, he did at, see you? Yeah, he okay. saw me parking the car. Gotcha. And he closes, and then he cl and he closes his door real fast, and I'm getting my bag, and then I see him running outside towards me, and as he's running outside towards me, I see... Uh, Jeff Jones with a camera behind him. And Jay Lethal right away goes, Truth, they got me booked in the tag match. And, and Jay Briscoe's on the other side. And I just say, yo, yo, look, we are not, we are not going to give these fans a free preview of Best in the World. Don't worry about a thing. I got it all taken control. He's like, are you sure, Truth? I go, listen, whatever lie to you, my man. He's like, no. I go, relax, relax. That match is not happening. And then we go back in. I went and cut a promo. I just put two and two together right off the top. It's not like we talked about what this promo was going to be about, but Jay Lethal, it's funny. I, almost, I, I get sometimes a little bit, uh, not over, overwhelmed is the wrong word, but because he says, he likes to say I'm a very good performer. And that was his way of like saying, oh yeah, we don't have to talk about it I with got, truth. He's going to know exactly he's, what. Yep. He's yeah. going to. He, 
he's gonna know exactly what to do right so that happened i knocked that out real quick i walk into the building and right to the right is the production room where we have the tv there you know dan bynum is there hunter's there everybody's there and then hunter looks over to the left and sees me walking he goes holy fuck how did you get here and every production room was shh and then i was just like i just like waved my finger like give me one second and then i hurried up and i'm like i'm like and then uh jay lethal goes all right first match is on second match is the one we just cut the promo about i was like cool i hurried up i washed my face brushed my teeth because trust me i was looking a little bit like i went through through, through a battle i haven't slept and my eyes are still closing. They're still closing. I'm trying to stay awake. So I'm there. I do my segment. Turned out fine. Two more matches. The last segment, the contract signing right before intermission. We do that. Now it's intermission. Now it's intermission. Everybody comes up to me like, hey, how did you get here? What happened? What happened? And I said, guys, to be honest, I'm extremely tired right now, and this is very uncharacteristic of me, but I am, I'm done for the night, and if you guys would excuse me, I'm about to drive four and a half hours back home and get some sleep. And they all gave me a round of applause, <laughs> and then I drove back home, and then as I'm driving back home, I'm kind of chuckling to myself, thinking like, I made it happen, and it wasn't a freak accident. It's because I knew it was going to happen. Once you make up your mind to do something, there's nothing going to stop you. The only person that can stop you is you. I mean, if it's the law, you know, and as you get older, these words like maybe and try, they don't exist to me anymore, Colt. They don't exist. If I say, hey, are you coming to the school tomorrow, and you say maybe, maybe what, what, what the fuck does maybe mean like 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 are you gonna try to come and people guns are gonna prevent you from coming it's like hell i tried to come but mm -hmm. i couldn't do it so like i have a low tolerance for those types of people i don't like the word try i don't like the word maybe either you do something or you don't you do it or you don't i'm driving back now i get to the, now i get back to windsor to go back home i'm thinking oh i'm finally home now so then uh over uh, on the american side he asked me you know where did i just come from and i told him uh, i did a wrestling show in toronto and he was like oh wrestling i like that stuff i'm like cool you know like i just want to go to bed mm -hmm. i'm still keeping my, i'm trying to keep my eyes open I, and then he was just like cool he puts a sticker on my on, on my window i'm like are you kidding me he goes Go ahead and pull over there. I'm like, oh, man, here we go. So as we're pulling over, there's always a guy, uh, you know, guiding you into where to park. And then as I'm driving there, all of a sudden I hear him, no, no, this lane, this lane. Key, stay in the car. Take your money with you. And this man is yelling at me. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, why is this man yelling at Did you me? not hear the legend of Truth Martini four <laughs> hours before? <laughs> but I'm thinking, why is this man, like, is this what it's come to? We just yell at each other with no repercussions? Like, is this how human beings treat each other? And then when I got out of the car and I looked at him square in the eyes, and this is ridiculous because I looked at him square in the eyes, and to myself in my head, I go, you're next. Hmm. That's what I said. I go, you're next. Because I refuse to get treated this way, man. Again, back to what I said before. You're only going to get treated the way you allow people to treat you. Inside immigration, it took five minutes. Nothing. They saw my passport. They said, you can leave. As I go back, at this point, I think it was probably 1.30 a.m. in the morning now. Because I left during intermission mm -hmm. of Ring of Honor. So as I'm, as I'm coming back to my car, I see the hood of my door open and the trunk open. Because obviously they, you know, they went through my car to see if there's anything bad or whatever the case may be. Like baby oil or boot laces. <laughs> or, uh, it's, yeah, something horrible. Brass knuckles, some powder. right? <laughs> something horrible like that, exactly. So then uh, I walk up to him and I go, are you finished with the car? He goes, yep. Everything he said, oh, just the look in his face, everything was so short and stern. It's like, man, if you don't like your job, go get a different job, please. Stop taking that on everybody else. And I go, so are you going to close my hood and my trunk so I can leave? 
He goes, nope, close the hood in the trunk. You're free to go. And I'm like, right now I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm dying to go to bed. I live five minutes from the border. I go, do I let this one go or not? But I said to, I said to myself, you're next. I go, no, nah, man, you opened up my hood. You opened up the trunk. You're closing it. And here we go again. Here we go again. I could have simply just sure. closed it myself yeah, and went home. It was the, what's the word I'm looking at? The principle mm -hmm. of the thing. Just the, like, that's the mood I was in that day. It was the principle of the thing. Like, don't treat me like I'm your slave. You opened it, you close it. And then, so we start arguing back and forth. 55 minutes. <laughs> 55 minutes of us going back and forth. We, I'm I, just going, you close it. No, you close it. We've got be a man. No, I, I mean after after fifty five minutes, of course, you know we're talking, and he knows I did the wrestling thing, and he's saying stuff like, "I don't, I don't, you know, you probably think you're somebody special." I go, "To be honest, no." He goes, "I," he goes, "No, you got to close." I and we're just going back and forth, so probably uh, it, it was a lot of you close it, no, yeah, yeah. you close it. That God kind of stuff. wants you to cl wants those doors <laughs> closed. <laughs> Actually, God wasn't mentioned okay. in, in this one. So then I was like, okay, what angle am I going to take? Because there's always, always an angle. There's always an angle. So around the 50-minute mark, I decide, okay, I want to go home. But I have to checkmate them. Because, again, like I said, if life don't check you, I will. And then I truly believe that. So now I say to him, you know that I've wrestled for 18 years. And then I did this cult. For those of you that can't see this, I'm going to really try to explain it. I start picking up both my arms, and I bring them up about chest height, and I go, ah. And then I do this grunt of pain. I go, I got, I go, I got two blown out rotator cuffs. My hands do not go any higher than my chest. I can't close the trunk and the hood. And then I smiled at him. That was my way of telling him what I'm about to tell you is clear bullshit, <laughs> but that's my story. But that's my story. And then he replies with, oh, come on now. You know you're so full of shit. I go, hey, that's my story. And he goes, come on, man. Close the hood in the trunk. And I go, I'm lifting my arms right now. I go, ah, I can't. Then again, with a big smile on my face, he's like, you are so full of shit. And I go, that is my story, man. He angrily slams the hood shut and the, and the trunk shut. He's like, go ahead, go home. I get in my car. I roll the window down. As I'm driving away, I raise my hand up nice and high, <laughs> and I wave to him, and I say, thank you, just to let him know, of course, I can raise my hand. And then I got to bed. And then I finally came home and got to bed. Uh, a person's word means a lot, man. Cult, I can't deal with people that will say one thing and do another. Uh, the older you get, the less tolerance you have for that. You know, that's why when I see older people talking, it's like they just get straight down to, to, to business. And a lot of that carny bullshit, like I just do not have time for it. And just be honest, be blunt, be straight up. You know, that's the way you have to be in this world if you want anything to be accomplished, honestly. You know, I have my, you know, like my students that I have at the school all the time, they're always like, what should I do here? What should I do here? And I'm like, well, what does your heart tell you, man? Like, I can give you tools on how to do things, but ultimately it's up to you. If you want something done, you're going to have to do it yourself. Nobody's going to help you. Nobody's going to help you. So I went ahead and I slept, and as I was laying down, I did feel proud of myself because I did not, I didn't let anybody step all over me. I told my boss I was going to be there. I was there. That was a good example for the locker room. It really was because some people, some people no show for whatever particular reason and they'll give an excuse. And my excuse of I'm not allowed into Canada, that's a good enough excuse. But I didn't even let that stop me. I didn't even let that stop me. And what drove me, sure, earlier I said, maybe it was a little bit of pride. Maybe it was a little bit of, you know, just showing who's 
the boss of their own world, meaning I'm in charge of my own life. Uh, a lot of that combined. Uh, and then I just laid in bed and I had a good night's sleep and I woke up. And then uh, everybody, when I saw everybody at Ring of Honor, they all wanted to hear the story. And I'm not going to lie, uh, it was hours and hours in that room and at immigration on, on the Canadian side where they weren't allowing me, where I've talked to everybody there to the point where I told a 28-year-old 28, 28 28 year female, fuck you for calling me a liar. And I'm throwing the word fuck around here, and they pulled out handcuffs and tried to handcuff me. I didn't allow that to happen. And then I got a checkmate when you mentioned the God thing. Like, there was no way around that. Uh, and there are other things in my life that I have goals, not where I'm saying I'm going to try to reach this goal. I'm saying I'm going to reach this goal, and there's nothing going to stop me. And if more people had that attitude, there would be a lot more successful people in this world. People give up on themselves way too easily. People give, the, people give up on themselves, you know, where they shouldn't, where they shouldn't. Life is not a dress rehearsal. What are you going to do it next life? Mm. No, man, this is the only time you got. And the, the, the professional wrestling business, if that's not one of the hardest things to try to be uh, prosperous at and try to, and to try to make a name for yourself, you know, you know, we say it all the time, you know, how many independent wrestlers are out there and how many spots are available to be making money. So I'm, I'm grateful to be in one of those spots, you know, considering, you know, Ring of Honor and also the House of Truth Wrestling School, hotwrestlingschool.com, you know, my students, like, you know, we've talked before, you know, they go on, you know, they wrestled in the WWE, you know, they go over to Japan. Uh, how about my boy CJ Parker just saying screw it and mm -hmm. just leaving the WWE because he wants to go out and prove himself. That was his choice. Mm -hmm. That was his choice because he said he's, he looked at the guys that he looked up to down at NXT like Sami Zayn and Kevin Steen and all these guys and uh, saying, what did these guys do to get this knowledge? Oh, they traveled the world. Oh, they worked with different people with different styles. He wants to experience all that so he can prove to them that he's more than what they think he is because his story is he got signed way too quick. Straight out of my school, they signed him probably a year and a half later. He didn't get that experience. He didn't. So I talked to him quite a bit, which he is now going to, uh, he's, he's going to be going uh, overseas pretty soon, which I'm happy about that. But as far as fighting the law, and to finish that sentence, I fought the law and motherfucker, I won. <laughs> I won. Thanks for coming on, Trey. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. Love you, cult. Truth Martini could teach you this, how to do that, all that, and more at his wrestling school, which I have been to and I have helped teach. He has a real deal school there. He's there all the time. And if you're one of those people who are like, I want to move from somewhere and locate somewhere, go get an apartment in Detroit. Go to his school and become a professional wrestler. I couldn't recommend anyone more. And not only that, you'll get stories like that every single day. Truth Martini, thank you for telling your story, buddy. All right, let's get into some plugs and... Upcoming events! All right, the best way that you can support me, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast, ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email, CutMyPromo.com is my web series, I'm sure you saw Big Frank this week, what a legend he was, ColtCabana.com is my newly updated website, there you can find my P.O. Box and you can send me something awesome in the snail mail and I will receive it when I get back from Scotland. Upcoming! You know the deal. I'm at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Scotland. I'm here all month, the 6th through the 31st, every single night, 11 p.m. Grab your ticket, thestand.co.uk. I think some of the Mondays and Tuesdays, there might be a uh, buy one, get one. So that's something to look into. Every single Sunday, insanewrestling.co.uk. And then that Sunday at 5.30, I'm doing podcasts. The end of the month, I'm doing one in Glasgow, by the way. Three in Edinburgh, one in Glasgow. ColtCommander.com has all that information on the front page. When I get back home, September 3rd through the 5th, Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, Clinton, Iowa. 
GlobalForceWrestling.com. We're touring the minor leagues. September 11th, that's a Friday. Cleveland, Ohio, AIWrestling.com. I've been hearing you guys are doing good. Looking forward to making my comeback there. Also, another favorite place I love, Saturday, September 12th, Brooklyn, New York, ProWrestlingSyndicate.com. I know you guys are doing good. I look forward to heading back to that Brooklyn building. Used to do it for FWE, loved it there, loved FWE, but now it's time to rock it for ProWrestlingSyndicate.com. Com. That's it. Thank you for you guys at home. I really appreciate you listening. Thanks to Truth Martini. Oh, Truth, you are really wrestling's national treasure. Thanks to Gable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone, who's directing a movie in Toronto, by the way, Stu. Keep that up. Get Russell and Matt Jenkins on the music. Dane Miller with that tech help. Highspots.com, 100 full-length titles available to download, plus $5 wrestling titles and knee pads. Gear, a wrestling ring. Rob Naylor has a new project over there. Check that out, highspots.com, onehourtees.com. They got a new store in Chicago. We did it. We did it. They help run ProWrestlingTees.com. Go over there and support your favorite pro wrestler. If you're going to buy a Roddy Piper shirt, instead of bootlegging, you can buy one from Pro Wrestling Tees, and the money goes to his family. I think that's appreciated. And tweakedaudio.com slash Colt, the earbuds I use. Get over 30% off of free shipping just because you listen to this show. That's it. Off to Scotland. No babbling for me. I got, I got a plane to catch, and when you're listening to this, I got shows to watch. This has been The Art of Wrestling for Colt Cabana. I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. I do respect professional wrestling trainers. They do come from the school of hard knocks. I come from the college of kicking doors down. Just think for a minute. You made that one up, and you were real proud of yourself when you did. I am proud. Yeah. (laughs) 